Yaskawa Electric America's technical training services would like to welcome you to the Torque Control Overview e-learning module. My name is Paul Anderson and I will be your instructor today as we go through this e-learning module. This e-learning module will provide a basic overview of torque control and how to set up torque control for an application using the Iskawa F7 drive. During the course, we will cover three points. An overview and description of torque control, analysis of a common torque control application, and finally, how to program the drive to run in torque control mode. In simplest terms, torque control is a means of regulating motor torque instead of motor speed. Most people are familiar with speed control. A speed reference is supplied to the drive, and the drive runs the motor at the commanded speed. With torque control, a torque reference is supplied to the drive, and the drive runs the motor at the commanded torque. Torque control is used in applications where the force applied to an application must be controlled. Think of a garden hose reel. When winding the hose, you must be careful not to allow too much slack in the hose, or else the hose will not wind properly. This requires someone to control the amount of tension, or pulling force, on the hose as it is wound. Torque control can also be used in conveyor systems where one motor controls the speed of the conveyor and the other motors are used to help share the load by applying a certain amount of force on the conveyor belt. This is known as a helper drive. To understand torque control, it's helpful to first take a look at a speed control example. The system above is a simple conveyor moving some product. An operator will provide a speed command for the material flow. In response, the motor will pull the conveyor at the commanded speed. As more product is loaded onto the conveyor, the motor must develop more torque to meet the demand. Thus, the drive controls the motor speed by changing motor torque in response to the load. Three ideas that will be analogous to torque control can be seen in this application. First, a speed reference is used to dictate how fast the conveyor will run. This is the variable the drive controls when in speed control. Second, the motor torque varies to meet the load requirements. As the load increases, the motor torque must increase to maintain the speed the operator wants the conveyor to run at. If the load becomes very light, the motor torque must decrease so the speed doesn't go faster than the speed command. Third, a torque limit can be applied to the application. Just as a mechanic uses a torque wrench to tighten a bolt to a specified level, a torque limit can be used to prevent the motor from operating above a certain level. This is done to protect equipment from being damaged. Now let's look at an everyday torque control application. Everyone is familiar with driving a car. The gas pedal is pressed to a certain level and the car accelerates to a certain speed. The purpose of the gas pedal is to indicate how much force the motor should develop. For this car, with the gas pedal pressed down 50%, the car is able to operate at 55 miles per hour. As the car begins to reach a hill, the driver does not change the gas pedal, making no change in the output power from the motor. The increased load of driving up a hill slows the car down to 35 miles per hour. Note that the driver does not directly control the speed of the car, but rather the force of the motor. Again, three important ideas can be drawn from this example. First, a torque reference is used to dictate how much force the engine will apply to the wheels. Second is understanding how motor speed acts in response to an incline or an increased load. As the motor reaches a hill, the car begins to slow down because the same amount of force is applied from the motor even though the load is increased because the car is now going up an incline. However, when more force is applied by the motor on flat ground, the car will begin to accelerate. This is because motor speed is dependent upon both the motor force and the inclination. Lastly, a speed limiter may be built into the car. The purpose of the speed limiter is to prevent the driver from operating the car at dangerous speeds that may potentially cause damage. Now let's look at an industrial torque control application. This is a simple paper winder system consisting of an unwind roll that material is loaded from, a rewind roll that material is loaded onto, and a tension sensor or dancer that measures the tension in the paper or web as it is commonly referred to. Paper flows from the unwind roll to the rewind roll requiring both motors to turn in the same direction. In order for the paper to be wound smoothly on the rewind roll, a certain amount of tension must be maintained. Consider holding a piece of paper taut in your hands. In order for the paper to be taut, both sides of the paper must be pulled on. Similarly, both motors must pull on the paper, but in opposite directions. 
How hard they pull on the paper is dependent on the feedback from the dancer indicating how much tension is on the web. As tension decreases, more force must be applied to the web, requiring the motor to develop more torque. As tension increases, less force must be applied to the web, requiring the motor to develop less torque. As mentioned previously, the web flow in this application requires that both motors operate in the same direction. Because the rewind roll is pulling the web, the torque developed by the rewind motor will be in the same direction as the motor rotation. However, because the unwind roll must pull in the opposite direction, the unwind motor must develop torque in the opposite direction of its motor rotation. On this particular application, one motor must control the web speed and the other must control the web tension. The rewind roll will control the speed by pulling the web at a certain rate and the unwind roll will control the web tension by pulling the web with a certain amount of force. For this reason, we will look at the unwind roll in the torque control mode. The winder with the drives added to the system are now shown. One drive is required for each motor since one motor will be run in speed control mode and the other in torque control mode. The winder drive is run in speed control mode with a PLC sending a speed reference to the rewind motor. The unwind drive is run in torque control mode. The dancer sends an analog signal back to the unwind roll to act as the torque reference. As the web tension increases or decreases, the drive makes adjustments to the motor output torque to regulate the tension. Let's take a minute and look at the torque control components on the winder system. First, the torque reference indicates to the drive how hard the unwind roll will pull against the web. The source for this signal is the dancer control since it's measuring the web tension. Second, the motor speed on this application is mainly dependent on the rewind drive since the rewind drive is set up for speed control. However, slight variations in the speed may occur in instances where web tension drops and slack enters the web. Third, a speed limit must be considered. If the web was to break, the unwind roll would start to turn in the opposite direction. A speed limit would prevent the roll from winding in the opposite direction. Thank you for attending this Yaskawa Electric America e-learning module. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to learn more about our products. If you would like additional training, please contact us through any of the methods above. Thanks again and have a great day.